Hey guys, what's happening? So now bouncing back and for those of you that keep up with the community section, you already know, like a few days back, my healing factor just shut down, but now I'm about at 80%. So I figured why not let's go back and give it a go because there are a lot of things that we need to get into. And to kick things back off, I want to start off by talking about dark side and its purpose of using the ghost sector and its connections to what's going on at the source wall, as well as its connection to Perpetua to whom the Batman who laughs had mentioned to Lex Luthor. So let's get to connecting these threads. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so hopping back in and really jumping back in around the time that we had talked about the Legion of Doom really taking advantage of the fact that Batman was all alone at the Hall of Justice. Back during the Justice League Aquaman Drowned Earth event, there's one little thing that I skipped over, mainly because I feel like the topic would blend better with everything we're talking about in this video, but because you guys were going so crazy about it, we just gotta start there, which is one, Baby Starro in a jar, who has been recently renamed to Jaro because he's in a jar. But in addition to that, him calling Batman dad, which is one of those surprises that kind of just crept up on us in recent issues of Justice League, which is really and truly yet another callback to Justice League No Justice. Towards the end of the battle on Kalu, when Starro the Conqueror, whose mind powers in recent days mainly focus on conquering the weak, you know, back in the day, everybody could get it. But when Starro was ever so bold to make this attempt on an Omega Titan, and even with the help of Adam, who made him big enough to stretch across the Omega Titan's face, Starro was still ripped to pieces and presumably dead since that had taken place back in Justice League No Justice, which I have to say is one of the few moments that really gave us an inkling of how powerful these Omega Titans were. And yet and still, that moment has much significance because the Omega the Titans still have their role to play concerning the source wall, which I'll talk about more in just a little bit. But what we've come to find out recently is that even though Starro was torn to pieces, parts of him still survived that event, one of which Batman has taken under his wing, no pun intended, but he's taken him onto his own and raising him in this jar to where he's likened under Batman as a father figure. And for Batman who's raising him, if you will, he's doing this more so with the intention, instead of him growing into Starro the Conqueror, and some more so Jaro the detective, more or less. But the return of Jaro is really important because with Will Payton, Starman, who arrived at the Hall of Justice, critically injured from Lex Luthor's interrogations, but when he arrived, because of what Luthor did to him, much of his memory was lost. And so of course, Batman put Jaro to work so he can get as much information from Starman as he could because just sitting around and waiting for him to feel better and kinda see if he would remember wasn't so much of an option, mainly with time not being on their side. But of course, with Batman choosing this method of practice, Superman swoops in like, not cool, Batman, not cool. Like, what are you doing? And in my mind, I couldn't help but think like, okay, Superman, like, what do you think Jaro was sticking around for? Especially with him being raised by Batman. Like, come on, you know, sooner or later, he was gonna put that on somebody. Like, you had to know that was coming. But when Superman does this, it pretty much puts Starman's powers into overdrive. And this is where we begin to find out why he's come here, which happens to have a lot to do with Kendra, who I had mentioned in the previous video had a number of questions about the many things going on with her, like her transformation in Dark Knight's metal, the nth metal in her wings that had a strange reaction to the totality, and really just a lot of things happening to her that just left more questions than answers. So as a result, she went to Thanagar Prime with Martian Manhunter and Jon Stewart in hopes of getting some answers to all these things that were happening. And from their time on Thanagar Prime, they got a number of answers, but not quite the ones that Kendra was looking for. And some of those answers I may get into in another video. But as far as Kendra finding out what's going on with her wings, what was up with her transformation, what's her connection to the totality, those answers they didn't get. But some of what they did discover were revelations that were hinting at things were going kind of strange on Thanagar Prime. Like with Kendra while she was there meeting Shira Hall, who was supposed to be one of her previous incarnations, but for some strange reason they both existed as two different people. And with Kendra in hopes that Shira could shine some light on some of the gaps of what's going on, Shira really didn't have any answers answers and Kendra kind of took it as a maybe she's holding back secrets and with them technically being the same person perhaps she does know more and she's just choosing not to share. But a couple of the key things that Shira initially mentions is that Thanagar Prime is a place that is meant to keep secrets secret with the biggest secrets being kept in the vaults of Thanagar Prime. But what's significant about when these three arrive here is that Thanagar Prime is strikingly different and a little too perfect if you will and very much so like Shira just imagined 
the perfect Thanagar Prime in her own perspective and there it was. But when Martian Manhunter found out what the problem was, Shira sends none other than Carter Hall to go after Kendra just as soon as this happens. Which is another curveball but this is all gonna go back to Starman in just a minute. Because the twist that had taken place here with Martian Manhunter finding Shira's secret to which he had been drawn to for some time and when he discovers it it begins to clarify the different visions he's been having throughout DC Rebirth and the memories of his people prior to him being the last green Martian because this all comes full circle when he discovers that the elder Martian keep is still alive and being held prisoner on Thanagar Prime by Shaira because she's the only one who could actually use the Absorbaskin after the events that had taken place in Dark Knight's Metal. And so because the Absorbaskin is made of Nth Metal and really just to rewind just a little bit further back and talk about what it could do before and what it can do now and how Dark Knight's Metal changed that real quick. Like previously the Absorbaskin which originated on Thanagar Prime and like in older issues of Hawkman it could either be used as a tool or as a weapon. And previously it was just a device that would allow you to probe minds and retrieve information or perhaps even teach someone about the particular history of a person or place. But because of what happened in Dark Knight's Metal with the source wall being broken and Nth Metal being supercharged across the multiverse and the Absorb Baskin being made of Nth Metal, it augmented its abilities to the point of where the person wielding it can actually make everything that they imagine become a reality. And this is the reason why Shaira held the Elder Keep in order to do this because the Elder Keep had memories going way back with so much detail which is mandatory in order to make this work. But for Martian Manhunter with discovering the Elder Keep and her telling him first that she was being held there in order to sustain this reality for Thanagar Prime but in addition to that showing Martian Manhunter the truth about the multiverse that existed before this one which was a perpetual one which was dark and meant to be eternal being that it was constructed by the Cosmic Mother wielding the seven energies of creation to which all seven of the energies are represented in her mark which also connects back to her. And the Maltusian scientist Krona who as a precaution had her sign removed from every sector to which it could possibly be found and as a step of prevention to prevent her from coming back, Krona collected as many of these pieces as possible and studied them in secret because if all seven energies were unlocked then Perpetua would truly rise again. Which is pretty worrisome with Lex Luthor already having locked three and possibly four at this point with his attempts of using the Legion of Doom to wield each power. But what's even more nerve crunching is the idea that the knob that Lex Luthor has and every time he unlocks a new energy another part glows, like that knob is missing quite a bit of detail in comparison to the actual symbol of Perpetua from which we're given by the Elder Keep. To which I believe is information that the Batman Who Laughs already knows and is very likely why the Batman Who Laughs only gave Lex Luthor the name Perpetua to start off with, knowing that Lex Luthor would just start running and unlocking and gathering the others to wield the different energies so that the Batman who laughs can go and handle other things at the same time. And he'll eventually fill in Lex Luthor on the rest in a very disturbing way. And like we talked about before, you know it's disturbing when the Joker doesn't even want to try to upstage it. In fact, he wants no parts of it just because of the Batman who laughs. But as far as Martian Manhunter getting this information and also learning that on top of that, Perpetua had an army that was made of both Martian and humans. And after the time that the Maltusians had evolved into Guardians, they attempted to hide as much of this truth as possible. With that truth being that Perpetua's perfect army, DNA was comprised of both Martian and human, but they were separated at the time that she was locked away. And with the Elder Keep telling Martian Manhunter all of this, like with her dying breath, she goes on to tell Martian Manhunter that a group of humans have been creating these perfect soldiers, which was only possible from the DNA that they got from Martian Manhunter being the last green Martian when they had abducted him as a child. But with the Elder Keep who had just given Martian Manhunter all this information with like her dying breath, she then passes shortly after, which pretty much means this perfect world of Thanagar Prime as it should be or used to be, according to Shaira, begins to crumble. And in desperation she tries to stop it, but when she attempts to use the Absorbaskin, it immediately starts to kill her. And as a result, the illusion which was Thanagar Prime begins to go away just like a snap. But at the same
same time, these weren't the actual people. Like this wasn't the real Carter Hall, but this was the Carter Hall that she would imagine to have as her own if she could have Thanagar Prime the way that she wanted. But right after this happened, Starman, who has the power of the totality inside him pretty much, he had heard Martian Manhunter from the other side of the universe and immediately traveled to Thanagar Prime with Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman in order to fix what wasn't right between Kendra and Shaira being two incarnations existing at the same time because the totality had broken the chain of resurrection. And the critical reason why Kendra needs to be restored is because she needs to take the place of the Omega Titan Entropy which died in Justice League No Justice because the Omega Titans were the key ingredients to repairing the Source Wall. And after getting Kendra and the rest of the Justice League to return to the Source Wall, he also gets help from New Gods, Green Lanterns, and Shaira even chipped in with what little she had left, admitting that she knew Kendra's purpose and she knew that she kept a part of it within herself but she didn't want to give it up because of the risk of losing her individuality and part of herself in the dream world that she had made Thanagar Prime to be. But on the flip side, when you just think about it, for Kendra who's pretty much the opposite when it comes to the mindset between her and her doppelganger if you will, because Kendra is willing to lay down her life pretty much and lock herself within the source wall to keep it from being destroyed, like completely selfless. And for those who are wondering as far as the Omega Titans, they're willing to do this because they know this is what they're made for. So it's not like the Lanterns or the New Gods are making them do this or the Omega Titans are being overpowered in any way, but they know this is part of their purpose and as a result, they're cooperating 100%. And so after Starman had prepared Kendra to go in, Martian Manhunter had actually taken memories from Thanagar Prime and many of Kendra's fondest memories of Thanagar Prime and created a replica that would live in Kendra's mind as she slept in the Source Wall. Like just as a way to make her sacrifice a little easier for her. But of course, you already know Lex Luthor couldn't let this happen so smoothly. And it's here where we find out the true purpose of why he brought back Brainiac, which we had touched on slightly in the previous video, being that Luthor's calculations could not be off not the millionth of a percent to the decimal. Because for what he's about to do right now, he needs Brainiac, and Brainiac's like the only person who could really get it down to a T like this. Because at this moment with Starman, who's showing Kendra how to to fulfill her destiny, so to speak, and seal this final piece for the source wall, Brainiac ship attacks Starman with just enough, and not so much to take over him, but with just enough time to distract him and use him to reroute Kendra's purpose to release Perpetua instead of seal her prison, and which as a result completely destroys the source wall. And with Brainiac making these specific calculations and doing this, this was only part of it, because as soon as Perpetua was released, Brainiac also assisted Luther in imprisoning Perpetua immediately after. And after doing so, Lex Luthor did not stick around. Like, they got out of there quick because it wasn't pretty. And like, the whole universe was like, heads up. And the Guardians called for like every Green Lantern to go back to Oa. New guys were being unformed, which is why, finally, I want to get into why Darkseid was in the Ghost Sector at the time that this was happening. And that mainly plays into that cosmic, that unique cosmic distortion that the Ghost Sector created, which actually protected Darkseid at the time that the destruction of the source wall took its effect across the multiverse. And at this point in time, we don't know the full effect of what this is going to do, but if the example of just what the crack in the source wall did to Nth Metal is any indication with like what we just talked about with the Absur Baskin, like just imagine what the complete destruction of the source wall would do as a result. And in addition, like the Batman Who Laughs had mentioned with many of these relics from the source wall being released just when the crack was made in Dark Knight's Metal, like just imagine what that means now with the source wall destroyed and Darkseid proclaiming now that he was out of harm's way and now that the source wall is destroyed that now he can fulfill his new plans which is insane but that'll do it for this one guys like let me know down in the comments who is going to be the worst the soonest like is it going to be the Batman who laughs Lex Luthor Darkseid Perpetua like man the villains are winning <laughs> but let me know your thoughts down below and we'll do it again in the next one all right later